So there were a number of reasons why I chose to become both an otolaryngologist and then a head and neck surgeon. Um, as a student, the surgeries that I got to be a part of uh, were, were technically very challenging, uh, but also very rewarding. As I continued in my training, I decided that I would specialize in head and neck cancer surgery, which is a subspecialty within otolaryngology. Cancer is, um, and specifically head and neck cancer, can have a, um, a significant impact on quality of life, uh, especially in terms of breathing, swallowing, communication, and physical appearance. And my goal is to give the patient the best chance at survival while optimizing quality of life. Our understanding of head and neck cancer is uh, rapidly evolving and changing. We're understanding the mechanisms down to a molecular level that cause head and neck cancer. We're also starting to learn that there are certain viruses that can cause certain head and neck cancer. So we're learning that each type of cancer may have, or each cancer may have its own unique signature. As we learn how to decipher that signature, we're getting better at tailoring and targeting therapies for that specific cancer in that specific patient. At the same time, we have evolving technologies and modalities that we can use for the treatment of head and neck cancer. One of these is robotic surgery, which is a procedure that I offer here at SIU School of Medicine. Robotic surgery allows me to operate in areas that previously have been very difficult to operate. Previously, patients would need much larger surgeries that required significant disruption of normal tissue with lots of morbidity. We can now use robot-assisted surgery to remove tumors surgically while minimizing disruption to normal nearby tissues. All of these advances and improvements that I've mentioned are taking place right here at SIU School of Medicine. It's very exciting that I can be a part of all of these and improve the quality of care for our patients. So taking care of head and neck cancer patients is particularly challenging, and that's something that we recognize at the Simmons Cancer Institute. One of the approaches that we have to address that is that we have a multidisciplinary approach, meaning that we have uh, a number of different physicians as well as other providers that work together as a team. When patients come in for the first time, they'll be seeing a head and neck surgeon such as myself. They'll also see members of our team, including an oncologist and a radiation oncologist, and we'll see them together in clinic. This decreases the number of different pro providers that patients have to go and see and is logistically a lot easier. After we meet that patient, we have a multidisciplinary conference. At that conference, all of the providers, uh, especially the head and neck surgeon, the medical oncologist and radiation oncologist are present. We also have input from our pathologists as well as radiology colleagues. There are certain non-physicians that also participate this include our speech pathologists, social workers, and research coordinators. All of us can sit down and work together to formulate a set of recommendations for our patients. We can then go back to the patient and present those recommendations and options to formulate a treatment plan um, with the patient.